to set up their press and make Minnesota use time off the clock. But Minnesota, they like to go through their progressions anyway, so. So so far as the ball stolen, that was Paige Beckers who tipped that. What a pass by Paige Beckers to Kristen Williams for the layup. Timeout, Minnesota and Lindsey Whalen. Never going to be a problem for us, but there's a lot of things he wants them to do on defense. He doesn't want to allow a team threes. Well, last no year they were, uh, they were sixth in the country in defensive uh, with only allowing 52.6%. So they have that ability. And traditionally your defense is usually ahead of your offense. It's a little bit easier to teach. So we'll see what happens with them here the rest of this first quarter. Caddy Sissoko will inbound the balls in the backcourt to Jasmine Powell. See if we can get something set up here offensively. UConn here in the, just sort of a matchup zone. Sissoko driving the lane. Shot won't fall off the glass. And you see that ability, you know, at her height. She is nimble with the basketball at 6'2". She can drive. She can shoot threes as well. Four yep. seconds on the shot clock here. Jasmine Powell inbounding the ball. Foul called. And that foul will be on Kristen Williams. Got to get something off quick here. Guarding Scali is inbound. They reset the shot clock. Lose the ball and UConn will get it again. Aaliyah Edwards with the purple and gold braids honoring Kobe Bryant. The late, great Kobe Bryant has had such an impact on the women's game as well as the men's. Driving the lane was Kristen Williams. She's fouled. If you're a coach, you say on the scouting report, Kristen Williams is left-handed. Stop her from going left. But it's so much easier said than done, especially in the course of the offense when you're changing sides of the floor with the ball. Kadiva Hubbard picks up her second foul. Williams so and tough on the drive. And she'll head to the bench. Now into the game for Minnesota, Deja Winters. She's another one for them that I think will, gives them some versatility, more important, some athleticism to deal with Connecticut's defense. Kristen Williams makes her free throws and now UConn leads 12-0. Scalia on the wing, trying to get the ball inside. And Deja Winters with the three-pointer just in the game, and Minnesota finally on the board. And good defensive transition there. The team always runs a lot faster after a made shot. <laughs> I can talk in the exactly. microphone if you can hear me better that way. Okay. And the shot from the okay. elbow doesn't go for Odota, Nelson Odota. Jasmine Powell bringing the ball up. She's not able to get the ball through the trees, those long outstretched arms of guard Paige Beckers. Ball inside to Aaliyah Edwards, and she gets the layup. Oh, and the very lead for Edwards UConn. doing a great job of just carving that position out, pinning her defender right in transition. UConn's backed off that three-quarter press. Powell at the point. Into Caddy Sissoko, and she gets it to fall off the glass. Nice move. Yeah, smart to turn away from the double team, go to the baseline side for that score. Again, this is the third backdoor you've seen from UConn because the Minnesota players aren't paying attention to both. Ball, you man. Nice basket by uh, Kristen Williams and the pass by Westbrook. Scalia serving. Powell traveling. UConn ball with the lead 16 to 5. In for Minnesota, Alexia Smith. Out goes Powell for what is probably going to be a brief break.
Kristen Williams get it to Beckers. Beckers at the top. She, she got finds away with the travel there. <laughs> the Minnesota bench was calling for it. Kristen Williams, free throw line, Jay, off the rim. Rebound, Deja Winters. Oh, and it's stolen by Westbrook. Layup, no good, but called for the foul. Westbrook very active on defense. We saw in that last half-court possession, she was mad she didn't get a steal here on the wing. And she's getting after it. Called for the foul on that one. Becker so far, just the one shot from the field, which she made, and they've really distributed, distributed the ball very well offensively. And that's what I think she's been good at this year is, you know, everybody knows she's the go-to player, but trying to get other players involved and just letting the game come to her, you know, more. She's more calm this year, uh, I think, when she plays. And, again, only a sophomore. It's really impressive what she's been able to do. Westbrook makes both of her free throws. A great free, throating, shoot, free throw shooting team this UConn team is, as always, under Gino Oriema. And you see Oriema, I mean, he's got like two and a half teams on his team. He's bringing in FUD. He's, he's bringing in UHAS. Mm -hmm. Alexia Smith now running the point. Scalia. Oh, and she puts up the shot. It does not fall. Great defense by UConn so far. Kristen Williams pushing the ball up the floor at AZ Fudd in the game. And their putback goes for Dorka Uhas. 20 to 5. Again, doing a great job. The post players for UConn, they are making a beeline to get as close as they can to that basket and go right into them so you can go right into them during transition. Dorka Juhas, a senior, who's a great contributor on this team. She's from Hungary. She's an Ohio State transfer and can play traditional post for you or play from the perimeter. Oh, and the long three off the side of the backboard as the shot clock expires. Winters knew she had to get a shot up. Yukon doing a great job of just making Minnesota make a whole lot of passes and everything's under duress and so they don't have time to get into their, you know, into their groove offensively. 15 point lead for Yukon. Paige Beckers to Aaliyah Edwards looking for that give and go. And the three pointer does not go. For AZ Fudd, the freshman, Caddy Sissoko with the rebound. See what I mean? Start and finish the fast break. They've got to get her more involved. Maybe run some two-person games with her so that she can handle the basketball as you see Williams there with another layup for UConn. And UConn gives it right back with the transition layup by Kristen Williams. Exactly what Minnesota did. They, Kristen Williams said, I'll see you that and raise you. Aaliyah Edwards and Sissoko having a good battle down low. Deja Winters with the three. And Minnesota now pulls within 12 points at 22-10. Trying to make sure this thing doesn't get away here. Well, Winters, you know, transferred from North Carolina A&T, so she's had a lot of experience playing. So that doesn't surprise me that she comes in able to score right away for Minnesota. Key player off their bunch, AZ Fudd. Paige Beckers, shot won't fall. Sarah Scali with the rebound. The three falls, Minnesota pulls within nine. Oh, uh, Scali is one of the best shooters in the Big Ten and she has no problem pulling it. Dorka Juhas being guarded heavily there by Anna Mich Alana Misho, excuse me, who's in the game. Minnesota using a lot of players here in the first quarter. Pass from sophomore to freshman, Beckers, so to AZ Fudd. 
Turnover, Minnesota. Uh, excuse me, turnover, Yukon. Laura Bagwell, who we're just seeing in the game, averages eight points a game. Senior from Minneapolis. Five players on this Minnesota team hail from Minnesota. Some of that homegrown talent. And Lindsey Whalen, who we were talking to earlier this week, said they take a lot of pride in being from Minnesota. Yeah, she says they don't prioritize Minnesotans, but it's always nice when, you know, the better players want to look at and come to their university. Powell back in the game. Goes around the trees. Pass off to the wing. And jump shot off the glass for Alexia Smith. Minnesota on a little run here, and they pull within seven. 135 left in the first quarter. Powell will go to the free throw line. Foul is on Jasmine Powell. Coach Whalen over on the sideline advocating for her team, man, trying to get some calls from the officials. I love it. She is Minnesota through and through, isn't she? Played here at Minnesota. Won four championships with Minnesota in the WNBA. Now coaching this team in her fourth season. Well, just a championship mentality. That's what she brings to that position. And every year her teams have gotten better. And, you know, she's already walked that walk. So when she says something, her, her players listen. It matters. It means something. If they want to get to the WNBA or coaching as Westbrook makes her second free throw. They can certainly follow in her path and her footsteps. I think Westbrook is one of the players for UConn that's not talked about a lot. Not a whole lot of scoring or whatever, but she really does contribute in ways that you don't see on the stat, on the stat sheet for UConn. Foul there on Avino Westbrook. Also, Nika Mule has, is in the game. First time we're seeing her today. She hails from Croatia, sophomore. He knows not quite where South Florida is with the foreign players, but he's, he's dipping his toe in, the, in those waters. <laughs> And why not? We see so many wonderful international players in the NBA, the WNBA, college, and they will go wherever they can to find the best players. And a turnover, traveling on Laura Bagwell. The Herald of Freshman Caroline Ducharme in for UConn. Coach Ariema had a lot of great things to say about her and her Ability and understanding of the game and her basketball IQ. Nice little flare screen there at the bump. I'm not sure that pass was intended for you, Haas, but <laughs> we'll go with it. Tried to get it, had her hand on it. Nika Mule taking the ball out of bounds. And there's Dorka Juhas. That shot won't fall. The Gophers trying to set up that offense. And Deja Winters with a long three again. And Minnesota now within six. See, here's where it's difficult, as Gino has said, that a lot of teams haven't seen each other this year play a lot of games. And so the players don't really have a visceral understanding of their talent and ability. They say in the scouting report, obviously, Winters can shoot threes, but until those players have seen it and experienced it, that's why you see her having an effect here. And they're only down by six now. Deja Winters battled the ball away there, and the Minnesota bench went crazy. You can tell they're preaching defensive stops. And again, they were down by a mile early, and they have clawed their way back. Deja Winters now with nine points. Three of those three-pointers. Paige Beckers with the three off the front of the rim. Rebound, Minnesota. Shot clock down. Paige Beckers 
flings that one away. Point one seconds left here on the shot clock in the first quarter. Time to just, when you pass that ball up, it's like a, a volleyball set, right? You just gotta get that shot up immediately. And not able to. And we will end the first quarter here with UConn leading 24 to 18 here at Imperial Arena in the Bahamas. Way here in the Bahamas with UConn leading 24 to 18. And what have you seen in the paint in this game so far? Well, UConn's leading points in the paint 10 to 6, but they were trading twos for threes toward the end of that first quarter, and that's why you see only a six point difference here. Winters leading Minnesota with nine points. Kristen Williams with 10 leading for UConn. Nika Mule tries to pass the ball on the wing, but nobody there. Turnover Huskies, Minnesota ball. Caddy Sissoko, one of the transfers from Syracuse. 11 transfers from Syracuse, most in the country. We'll also see Syracuse here in the tournament today as well. well Sissoko is, again, could create a lot of mismatches, and they should go to the two-person game like they're doing now with her because she can score. Deja Winters short on the three. Kristen Williams rebound, passes it up to Nika Mule, and she can't control it. Turnover Huskies, Minnesota ball. Yeah, so that wasn't a great shot by, by Winters. She could have gone inside to Sissoko there, and then Sissoko would have passed it out to her. She would have had more open three. The threes that she's had have been because of the ball movement. And they were falling for her in the first half. Winters now to the bench. She's three of six from three-point range. Jasmine Powell gets the ball into Sissoko, who's fouled. Exactly what you're nice. talking about. Get her the ball. You got the ball. Number five, Paige Becker is her first. First must be team foul. Beckers picks up her first foul. Jasmine Powell drives baseline, tries to pass the ball off, but loses it. Beckers pushes it ahead to Kristen Williams. No, drops, no. stops, and gets the basket. 26-17, 26-18, 26, 26, excuse me. The scoreboard says 117, but we're not quite there yet. <laughs> I mean, that would be a really fast game. Jasmine Powell with a one-handed floater won't go. Two-ended pass by Paige Beckers. The three-pointer, no good for AZ Fudd. AZ Fudd, one of the star-studded freshmen on this team. Yeah, for Minnesota, I mean, when you miss, you're not gonna get another opportunity, so you've gotta make sure that you take good shots and be on balance. Uh, they're not gonna give you a whole lot of offensive rebounds. And Beckers will take the ball out of bounds. Becker fairly, Becker's fairly quiet offensively in terms of, you know, she had a career high 34 points and a season opening victory, but she's still doing so much offensively, setting up her teammates, playing so well defensively today as well. She's got three points in 11 minutes here, two assists. Well, remember we, you know, we talked to Gino about her and he said the ball always seems to find its way to her hands, you know, in the crucial time. So again, no need to do a whole lot right now besides getting your teammates involved and doing all the small things. But, you know, when the time comes, she'll know and she'll do what she needs to do. But it's better to get the rest of the team involved now because they're going to need the rest of the team as the season progresses, especially, uh, you know, they're playing for March. Every game they play here in the early season, they're playing getting ready for March. That's Gino's motto, playing for March. They'd sure love to win these uh, tournament games as well. They've won 59 uh, tournament games in the regular season. 59 consecutive regular season tournament games. Minnesota gets their hands in there and for the steal. And Alexia Smith with the ball. There's a mismatch right now with Sissoko on Westbrook. They should go to her. Zalia Edwards is on the bench. And the long three for Sally, Sarah Scalia off the rim. Rebound UConn as they push it. That, the bounce pass through everybody. 
Those you are as we get into as they get into the season, they're going to have better timing on that. So that's if there is such a thing, it's a good turnover. They're trying to do the right thing. You're talking about that. Everybody touched the ball, pass first, dribble second, offense for Gino Ariema, and the ball always ending up in, in Paige Becker's hands. And he said that's because the best players move well without the basketball. Shot clock down to seven. Sissoko passes it off to Scalia on He's cut the lead to five. So mistakes on both sides of the ball, but Trying to get a little bit more athleticism in there with Scania's in the post. Paige Becker's with the steal, and she'll push it. One on two, of two on two, and she gets the ball to Avina Westbrook for the layup. Nice pass by Paige Becker. UConn leads by seven. They won their first game by 15. Scalia with the three from Miami, and it falls. Minnesota pulls within four. She is not afraid to pull the trigger, and they give her the green light. Kristen Williams for the three. No, but they get the offensive rebound, and they'll reset. AZ Fudd from the baseline. She gets her first points of the game. Well, what that's going to do for Minnesota is make them, make UConn play out a little more because they've got to come all the way out of Scania. That's going to, I mean, excuse me, on uh, Clear. That's going to open up the inside more for Minnesota. UConn call the reverse team, Kristen Williams. Seven point lead for UConn. Aaliyah Edwards back in the game. Caddy Soko not in right now. But I like that battle so far. Oh, excuse me, Caddy Soko is in. Up at the elbow. So we'll get to see that battle between her and Aaliyah Edwards. So Soko trying to drive baseline, now goes to the lane. She wanted to spin and lost her footing. Shot clock down to five. Deja Winters passes it off to Scalia, who takes the three. Bounces off the back of the rim and up and in. Gophers are back within four. Foul. Uh, foul on Nelson Adota, I think. Nelson Adota. Couldn't see the numbers on the far so side of the court. Minnesota giving themselves a chance, shooting 58%. From the three, seven to 12 this half. And that's one of the things Gino Oriem and his team talk about, no threes. And they don't like to give up threes as Paige Beckers misses the three, Minnesota ball. No threes, don't give up layups, don't foul, and don't give up the second shots. But you know they'll be talking about that at halftime, about the threes that they've given up today. Yeah, I expect there would be a lot of pressure from Minnesota after, after halftime. Spread out their defense and go one on one. Make them put the ball on the floor. Deja Winters at the point to Scalia. Scalia surveying. She decides to take the three and she's got it. The Gophers are just making everything from behind the arc today. Eight three pointers here in the first half, and we've still got 4.43 left in the second quarter. Kristen Williams with a three of her own, and she leads UConn. 15 points. She's 5 of 7 from the field. Nice calming veteran presence there to extend the momentum for Minnesota. She always seems to stop the bleeding every time Minnesota cuts within 4 or 5, right? Eight on the shot clock. 
jumper is short. You take UConn off the bounce. You've got to be sure what you're going to do on that last dribble. And we will have a media timeout here with 4.05 left in the second quarter with UConn leading Minnesota by 4, 34 to 30. We are back here at Imperial Arena in the Bahamas where UConn leads by 4, and it's been raining, three here to, it's raining threes here today. Oh, just a lot of miscommunication defending the three and the screens on the balls from UConn. I'm sure they'll get that corrected at halftime. Nice backdoor there. They missed the pass. They were reviewing the uh, in the timeout. The Kristen Williams, well, that's a layup. That doesn't have to be reviewed, but they were reviewing her three. It is, in fact, a three, and UConn up by six. And she goes right. If you allow her to have that head of steam, she's going to score. you got to make her pick the ball up to be effective when you make her go right. Minnesota with eight threes oh, here so man. far. Sissoko with the ball. That nice shot. Is, they need to go to her every time, every time. That was a pretty little play, a high percentage shot. And what a pass and what a finish. Nice pass by Olivia Nelson Odota, the bounce pass into Kristen Williams and Kristen Williams what a game she's having, 19 here in the first half. And that's something Minnesota's going to have to correct at halftime. And by my count, that's at least four backdoor scores from Connecticut. Sissoko with the 18-footer misses that. UConn ball. Paige Beckers. Easy Fudd, Nelson Odota, the bounce pass again to Kristen Williams for the layup. Timeout, Minnesota. Why is that play working so well, getting the ball into Kristen Williams? How is she so freed up for these layups? Well, they're playing, they're, uh, playing really hard on the outside on the wing, right? But when the ball goes back door, you have to turn your head and then still put your ball side hand out. And they're just not getting their hand, their head turned around quick enough to be able to get their hand in the passing lane on the back door. And UConn, again, great timing. As I said earlier, it takes a while to get that timing, but I guarantee you in practice, they break just that little bit down where they're going back door. Tremendous execution by UConn on that. We've seen that a, a couple of times here in the second quarter, that play working. Williams now with 21 points, 8 of 10 from the field. She is having a day. And remember, Gina Oriyama did say, we don't want to get it caught up in trading threes for twos because of all these uh, three-pointers that they've allowed, eight three-pointers. So he's going to want to talk about that, defending the three and uh, – going from there, but he did say we don't want to get caught up in a game where we're trading threes and twos. UConn leading by eight. Well, they'll get that corrected at halftime. Patty Sissoko drives to the basket over to Scalia. Alexia Smith passes to Winters who travels. Winters doesn't agree. Does a player ever agree to the official call to time out? I mean, a, a travel? Of course not. <laughs> There are no travels. If this was the NBA, that would not be a travel, but this is women's college basketball, the great Battle for Atlantis inaugural tournament. AZ Fudd from the wing. Her shot doesn't fall, and Winters, so productive today with the rebound. Scalia to Sissoko. Aaliyah Edwards arms up. Sissoko tries to pass the ball to... oh Edwards should have taken that in on the nice pass by Dota Edwards had a, had a mismatch there on Smith and now it's her turn with the easy shot off the glass the Huskies are getting so many easy shots and again Lindsey Whalen will be discussing that at halftime Scalia that won't fall. She got AZ Fudd to fly by and had a clear look, but that one didn't fall. Williams, ooh. She has been extremely aggressive today offensively, and it has all come within the flow of the offense. And that, you know, will certainly please Gina Oriema. 
Smith with the foul for Minnesota. Kristen Williams at the line. And back into the game for Connecticut is Nika Buell. Kristen Williams is going to get a much needed rest on the bench. Doubt it'll be long. One minute left here in the second quarter. Nelson Adoto off to AZ Fudd. AZ Fudd at the elbow makes the shot. UConn up by 12. He's just so smooth and, and just a beautiful jumper off the dribble. It looks effortless. The trap there, but Powell's able to get the ball to Winters, who makes the three, another one. And that's the ninth three of the game for the Gophers. Remember, they started off, they were down 12-0, 10-0, uh, and, and Coach Whalen had to call a timeout. That seems so long ago. But now the Huskies with a nine-point lead, they're going to be content to run the clock out and get the last shot here, it looks like. Picking up her dribble is Avina Westbrook. Seven seconds left. And from the baseline, Avina Westbrook with the three. And that'll do it for this half. UConn leading 47 to 35. Minnesota with nine threes. UConn with five threes. But UConn with the 12 point lead. been a great game so far. All right, everybody, welcome to the fourth. Ariane representing UConn and Micah representing Minnesota. They'll participate in our aqua And picture. Coach, you're walking over here shaking your head. What are you thinking right now? Well, we scored almost 50 points, and, uh, you know, it's been a struggle. Uh, you know, defensively, uh, we've done a pretty good job on everybody except the guy shooting threes. So it was, uh, it's something that, uh, you know, we've been concerned about. Um, so we're going to have to do a bunch better job in the second half of limiting that. And you went to your bench early. Coach, what are you looking for from them in the second well, I hope that they can come in and give us some offense, you know, that we don't have to rely just on our starters to get some offense. I think we were outscored 11-2 to two there at one point by their bench. So, um, you know, our, when we come off the bench, we got to contribute, and uh, hopefully we can do that in the second half. Coach, thank you. Thank you. Guys, back to you. Welcome back to the Battle for Atlantis. UConn leads Minnesota right now going into the second half. I caught up with Minnesota head coach Lindsey Whalen. As we were coming out, she told me obviously she wants to see more from Sarah Scalia as well as Deja Winters. Nine from 14 from beyond the arc for those two combined. And she said as far as UConn's transition, as far as their scoring, she's got to stop that. She's got to stop the back door. Jill, back to you. After this, and we'll go over the first half stats. And we are back to start the second half of the Battle for Atlantis inaugural tournament. First game as Aaliyah Edwards brings the ball in. And what stood out to you, uh, statistically speaking, in that first half, Helen? Well, 60% from three-point range, 9 for 15 for Minnesota. And obviously that was you know, the difference in their comeback. And then UConn had eight free throws. Minnesota had zero free throws. How about that?
Foul on the floor. Whoa, that pass from the inbounds directly to Paige Vickers, who gets a clean look in the lane. Oh, another back door. I'm sure they talked about it at halftime, but definitely need better help defense as well if you're not going to have great defense on the back door to see Hubbard here go for the three. And the shot by Godiva Hubbard. The three-pointer doesn't fall. Paige Beckers with her second field goal of the night. And she drives the, to the basket and makes the shot off the glass. She now has, Beckers has five points, rather seven, excuse me, and five of those are here in the very early going of the third quarter. Obviously, they're making a point to get her going. The same as in the first, half, first uh, score of the first half. Three-pointer here and go to her for the layup, being aggressive on the initial offensive oh, possession oh, of each person in the quarter. And she took uh, just four shots in the first half, but there's so many all-stars uh, on this team. So Kristen Williams was the star in the first half. Paige Beckers has made the first couple of shots here. Her sophomore year following up her incredible freshman campaign in which she was the player of the year. She got every player of the year award. So you can kind of a little flustered here, a little confused on the passes because Minnesota was in a matchup zone Minnesota. but when the cutter went through Powell went through with the cutter and so the rest of them are like are they in zone or are they, are they in man so trying to figure that piece out that's why you see that little person jerky stop there for UConn on their offense Paige Beckers to the line and again clock's running down so you know where's the ball it's going to be in Paige Beckers hands mm-hmm Becker's attempting her first free throws of the game. First one doesn't fall. Second one is good. UConn leading 52-35. They've extended that lead to 17, and the Gophers are going to have to make sure this... They keep hanging in there. Rest assured they're not going to get as many open threes as they did the first half, and Gino has anything to do with it. He won't play anybody that's going to allow them to do that. Jasmine Powell's shot doesn't fall. Paige Becker's bringing the ball up. You know they made those adjustments at halftime, as you mentioned. Kristen Williams and her shooting touch continues here in the third quarter. She makes a three, and she's now got 24. So tough to guard. And I think that's a good timeout by, by Lindsey Whalen here early in the second half. The Huskies, Huskies leading by 20 points. So once it gets to that 20 point lead, as you mentioned, a good time for Lindsey Whalen to take that timeout. Things were going so well there for most uh, of the third quarter when they cut the lead to four but it's gotten, and the Huskies have been able to extend it back to 20, and now when you add getting Paige Beckers going again into the mix, Kristen Williams with that three we see here from the baseline, it's just... Yeah, that, just miscommunication on that matchup zone because when the cutter went from the top to the wing, the defender went with her, but that time Kristen went uh, to the baseline, and it's like, do I go with her, or do I bump her off to the forward? So there's a miscommunication. Early in the season, when you're running that type of defense, when you run into those kinds of struggles because they're not sure, do I go, do I stay, do I go, do I stay, which sometimes works to your advantage because you're confusing the offense, even if you're doing the defense wrong. So time out to talk about, this is what we need to do if they send the cutter, if they're going to stay in that zone. And UConn, of course, has everybody back, and, and, and they added some talented freshmen. They're so deep, 14 players. But when you have everybody back on that second-ranked team in the country, uh, just that experience, there's something to be said for that leadership, that experience, knowing where to go, what to do. And Minnesota, of course, having some struggles with some, you know, they have some transfers and some younger players as well. but. A lot, a lot to, to think about. Yeah, and, and Gino, he, he was funny. We asked him about the new players, and he goes, he goes, listen, I got five kids that I trust. 
uh, three to four I might trust, and then the rest I'm just not sure about. So um, it doesn't matter when you you know you go to that program. You're the best thing since sliced bread coming out of school, high school. But um, you, you've got to really earn your keep uh, when you get to, to UConn. Absolutely. But injuries, if there were injuries for UConn that they sustain, you know there's so many players when you look over that bench that will be able to step up and, and step in. And he has an interesting recruiting uh, philosophy too. So many of the other teams always say, hey, if you come here, you can help us beat UConn. But what he says is, hey, if you think you are as good as you are, then you're going to contribute. And that's, you know, the best players like that about him. They don't want to be told that I can come in and start right away. Um, you, you definitely have to prove to him. You have to definitely gain his trust with the time that you're given initially to get more time. UConn pushing the ball up the floor. Kristen Williams at the point. G Gino asked Kristen Williams, foul on the floor. Gino asked her, hey, am I, am I tough to play for? And she said, yeah. And he said, why? And he said, she said, well, because you're demanding. And he said, would you like, like me to not be as demanding? And she said, no. He said, okay. Well, the proof's in the numbers, the number of national championships, the number of plays that go to the WNBA. Mm -hmm. And a little miscommunication there as UConn turns the ball over. But that wasn't a terrible turnover because even though you missed the cutter, you had somebody sliding up on the wing, so they'll correct that. Jasmine Powell bringing the ball up the floor for the Gophers. Lindsey Whalen with the instructions. Court side. Into Sissoko. Tries to get around Edwards. She does for the one-handed shot, but it does not go. UConn ball. Paige Beckers will take it out. Edwards trying to probe the defense there. Probably should have made a counter move back to her left hand, but they still, I think, need to go to her as often as possible. Maybe not so much in a, a situation where she's right there on the block, but getting her moving off those screens on the ball. Westbrook trying to find an open player. Good defense by the Gophers. A nice, a nice bounce pass here right to Aaliyah Edwards. And Olivia Nelson Adota with a nice assist there. And she's got six assists. Notice how quick that balloon to 20, 20 points. A 10 0 run here in the third quarter, just like in the first quarter. Paige Becker's coast to coast. She'll pick up her dribble, pass it out to the wing. And Westbrook on uh, the baseline, rather. Aaliyah Edwards. Kristen Williams. Kristen Williams drives to the basket off the glass. And she's got 26. So strong there. Scalia couldn't really do anything with her. Oh, great defense there, too, by Williams. That's how you play a backdoor cut. She's right on her like peanut butter to jelly. She had those arms extended. Jasmine Powell shot. Somebody got a piece of that. That's a defensive sequence that they're going to say, hey, this is how you do it. This is how you turn offense, uh, defense into offense. Just great communication on that side of the floor. Just a beautiful, beautiful transition. And Aaliyah Edwards on that last shot. She was a little surprised by the pass, but no matter, she still makes the shot. And the Huskies lead 61-35, and this is becoming a difficult spot here for the Gophers. Nelson Adoto with the one-handed bounce pass doesn't go. Aaliyah Edwards is Canadian. She played on the Canadian Master national team, Williams. practiced with the Olympic team, and didn't get much playing time, but I would assume that experience served her very well. Yeah, we've got a couple of uh, Canadians in this tournament. You've got to be here for South Carolina, which is, uh, also played on that Canadian national team. So they're, uh, they've got some hoopers up there on the men and the women's side. Paul Doyle did an article on, on Drake talking about wanting to get a WNBA team in Toronto, and he talked to Aaliyah Edwards about that, and she, she would love to be able to see that. <laughs> and the offensive foul is called on Sarah Scalia, and Aaliyah Edwards once again. Uh, just a great, great hedge there. Same as that last possession where you saw them get the transition basket. Hedge way out and the defender couldn't get by them. That just shows the athleticism of the bigs for UConn. 
And UConn leading 61-35 with 4.58 here left in the third quarter. Kristen Williams with 26 points for the Huskies. And the Huskies with the 26-point lead. Aaliyah Edwards with the ball. Oh, what a nice bounce pass inside to Aaliyah Edwards. The assist goes to Nika Mule, and they are just dominating in the paint. Well, they're making UConn pay. I mean, they're making Minnesota pay for their mistakes. Lack of communication there, and then no help defense. They are a load to uh, defend there in the paint. And now UConn working on their zone defense. Oh. All right, and these two coaches, Minnesota's Lindsey Whalen and Connecticut's Gino Oriema are very close. And for more on that, we're going to go courtside to Danny Wexelman. Danny? That was one of the more interesting storylines I think we were able to hear between these two teams. Lindsey Whalen playing for Gino Oriema on Team USA, winning two gold medals with that team. And Lindsey told us that she had the best job in America as Sue Bird's backup. Coach Ariema told us that Lindsay embraced her role. She was tremendous at understanding who she is, and I'm sure there's a lot of excitement and anticipation with these two playing against each other today, Jill. Such a special relationship. Lindsay Whalen said, you know, Gino changed the trajectory of her career by making USA Basketball in 2010. Um, and yeah, and she said that he is, you know, was responsible for her championship mentality, which I think is a big factor in what's going to make Minnesota successful um, in the way that she does things. And then she obviously, he obviously said he's, you know, very proud of her. As you see, we get a block here uh, by Mule. Very proud, and he's always excited when he sees great college players go on to be great. WMA, WMA players and you then giving to coaching and giving back to the next generation. So he's, he says he has a lot of respect for her. He likes her. He says, except for today <laughs> when they're playing. Exactly. Um, you know, he really is excited about where she's going to take Minnesota. He said he's one, she's one of the most fun players he's ever coached. And when you're talking about coaching USA basketball and coaching the Huskies uh, for 37 years, that's a lot of players and a lot of a lot of uh, profound words, and Lindsey Whalen says, I, I love the guy. She's, uh, she said he'd, she'd never won before. Uh, the, big, the big championships, the world championships, the Olympics, she went on to win four NBA championships. We have a foul on the floor here, and she said, you know, that really changed her trajectory, and just such a special relationship these two have, and again, that most of the coaches, the coaching fraternity in women's basketball has, but particularly in this tournament. Well, it, there's a lot of respect for Lindsey Whalen from coaches, from players that she oh, yeah. played with, um, the mentality that she brought to the game when she was a player. A um, lot, a lot of respect for her. And I have no doubt that you know, she'll get Minnesota going in the direction that she'd like for them to. Nelson Odota makes the first, makes the second. UConn up 65-37, and, and you talk about that, Lindsay, Lindsay Whalen in, in her fourth season, and, you know, Gino said as it took with him when he started uh, in stores, Connecticut, in 1985, it's going to take some time. So. Well, the interesting thing about, you know, great players is they don't always make great coaches, right? <laughs> they, they don't, sometimes they can't uh, deal with players who don't have the same mentality that they did. As you can see, the clock running down here for Minnesota. And uh, she said she really enjoys being with her players and experiencing some of these great highlights of their lives with them. There were probably four players that this is their first time out of the country. As you see, the shot clock running down um, for, for Minnesota. And she said being a part of that experience has been great. Sissoko got a shot off before the uh, clock. Went down to zero, but wasn't able to make it. She's hit the floor several times. Beckers to the lane. Wow, the pass outside. Kristen Williams with the three once again. And Kristen Williams now with 29 points on 11 of 13 field goals. She is just having a tremendous game. Well, I didn't see Beckers could have scored there, but she did that on purpose because she wants Williams to have 
confidence and be able to contribute, they're going to need her to shoot like that for the rest of the season, and especially in March. Sissoko had hit the deck. She got back up. And just in time to get the rebound, the pass off to Scalia. Scalia in the lane and wasn't able to convert on the shot. Beckers thought about it, drives to the lane, gives the pass up again to Dorka Juhas, and she makes the shot. And you're right, Paige Beckers just getting everybody involved. What a game she's having, and that was her fifth assist. It's almost like, okay, we're, we're up by 23. Who can I get going? Who can I give confidence right now? Scalia with the jumper. And now Minnesota pulls within 31. This thing happened fast. Beckers with a bullet inside. Now the pass out to Nika Mule. She is unable to connect with the iron and Godiva Hubbard with the rebound. They gotta just put a camera just on Gino and his, his facial expressions <laughs> when his team does stuff. It, it's hilarious. He is fun to watch, isn't he? Just such an amazing ambassador for basketball, women's college basketball, basketball in general. Lindsey Whalen said, nobody asked me, but I think he's the best to ever do it. Sissoko, shot clock winding down. She gets the shot off, but she is fouled. This should be by Yu Haas. Against any other team right now, you know, that the ability for Sissoko would really be shining through. And that Minnesota would be ahead, or at least even. And what so defense? Skilled. Exactly. What defense by UConn? They keep uh, forcing Minnesota into last second shots here with the shot clock winding down. Shots they don't want to take. And it's just fundamental defense not allowing the offense to make the passes that they want to make, not allowing them to get to the spots they want to get to that will help them run through their progressions offensively. And so you end up having only, you know, 10 or 11 seconds and you've got to make something happen. And if you have a player you know, that can do that for you on a consistent basis, that's great. But if you don't, then you, you struggle and you, you, know, you get behind by 30. It's happened to many UConn opponents over the years. Sissoko makes both of her free throws, and she's now got 10 points. Heads to the bench. Deja Winters leads with 12 points for Minnesota. Kristen Williams with a nice pass to Dorka Juhas, and she gets the bucket inside. Twenty-eight seconds left here in the third quarter. Look how mobile UConn post players are against the screen on the ball when they hedge out. They're so athletic and they hedge so well and force you to make decisions. Just nowhere to go. And Minnesota shot by Laura Bagwell in the lane. Oh, And that'll do it for three quarters here in the Bahamas in Paradise Island where UConn, the number two ranked team in the country, is all over Minnesota, 72-43. Well, they certainly made the adjustments that they needed to make. No doubt Gino gave them the talking to, and that's being polite. Um, <laughs> But, yeah, the, you know, the, the best championship teams, you, you've got to defend, and you can't let those types of runs happen where, you know, you saw Minnesota hit three, three, three threes uh, consecutively. So got to shore those kinds of things up if you're going to be a championship team. And now we'll head courtside to Danny Wexelman, who's got more on Gino Oriema being here in the Bahamas. Guys, I don't think we can overstate how important this inaugural event is. And when we talked to Coach Oriema, he said a few years ago there weren't enough opportunities like this. He's gladly Miller decided it was important enough to have this women's event and be invited and put together such a great field. He said playing the best teams early on is what women's basketball needs and more marquee matchups early in the season will whet everyone's appetite for what's coming next. Jill. Thank you so much, Danny. And you, you bring up a good point about Gino talking about these marquee matchups. You look at some of the possible matchups we could continue to have in this tournament with the top ranked uh, team in South Carolina here, the ninth ranked team in Oregon here. We could see some really great uh, matchups throughout this tournament. Yeah, and I think one of the things that was, you know, 
ran throughout the conversations that we have with coaches was that, you know, I'd asked them, why did you say yes to this, this tournament? Because it's important. It's important to women's basketball. And, uh, you know, Gino said we needed to have more games like this to whet the appetite for folks for women's basketball throughout the season. So kudos to all of them because, you know, they could have played cupcake schedules. Uh, but coming in here and playing tough teams and learning about your team at the beginning of the season and what you need to, to do to get better um, says a lot, a lot of credit to the coaches that said yes to this tournament. And they said yes for schools later to continue to have this tournament. Sure. We know the men's tournament, there's a great battle for Atlantis. Uh, men's tournament here as well coming up. Jasmine Powell's three doesn't fall, and the rebound goes to Dorka Juhas. So now we've got a women's tournament here as well, and I'm, I'm just so impressed at what they were able to do. I mean, this is the first one, as we mentioned, to get the Gino Oriamas to say yes, the Don Staley's, uh, Felicia Legette Jacks. I mean, just so many great coaches in this game kelly graves lindsey whalen that they all said yes and that's as you were mentioning that's that's part of it you want to be here and and nobody wants to play uconn in the first round of this but <laughs> somebody has to do it you say yes you know that that's you know a possibility here in this tournament well nice back door the, the the one thing that these coaches want to do is they want to continue to grow the game and so just like the late great Pat Summit, you know, when they had the Tennessee and the Connecticut, they didn't have to play each other. She didn't have to do a lot of things that she did, but it's Minnesota all in the name of growing the women's four, game. And so far, so good Seven, here six, in this five, tournament. This eight, is the first of four six, games today. And we will be bringing you all of those games here on Flow Sports. We appreciate you joining us. Vina Westbrook's first shot uh, doesn't fall. We talk about uh, points in the paint that UConn has dominated today. They've just been so effective uh, inside uh, in this game, and we expect that that will continue throughout this tournament. Well, it was 10-6 to 6 at halftime, points in the paint, and right now it's 38-10. to 10. So that run there where they ran it up to, to 20 points is just a you know, a testament to most of those were actually layups, right? Layups and back doors, layups and transition, not your traditional, you know, post back to the basket uh, paint points. So 28 to four difference points in the paint here in the second half. And we can point to that as why UConn has really pulled away. Bagwell's shot doesn't fall. Paige Beckers with the cross court pass. And that one doesn't go. We've got, got a basket, though, by Olivia, Olivia Nelson. Nelson. Caroline Ducharme had just been in the game, number 33, and she's a freshman with a lot of promise that Gino has talked about as well. So we're getting our first looks at, at her. Yeah, he really likes her game, likes her, as you see Powell there with the three-pointer, really likes Ducharme's approach to the game and grasp of the game. He just... Typical Gino, because I wanted to play better defense. So <laughs> this she's, is her opportunity to show him that she can play better defense. She's the fifth-ranked recruit in the country. Of course, AZ Fudd, the top recruit. Gino landing the top recruit in the country the last four of five seasons. Paige Beckers was one last year. Three by Avina Westbrook. And UConn extended its, its lead to 78-47. You don't see Westbrook score a lot of points, but her value on the defensive end is why she plays so much for UConn. I mean, and you don't see it, but just her defense guarding the, the back screens and the screens on the ball, all the stuff that no one ever pays attention to unless you're a coach trying to figure out who your best lineups are, that's what she does. Often guarding an opponent's best player as well. Jasmine Powell at the line makes her first free throw. She's been very effective for the Gophers today. She's, uh, you know, one of these players that I think can still get better. She can shoot three. She's strong going to the basket and really good, um, really good at the end of shot clocks on screens on the balls. Not so much today against UConn, but. There's where she has a lot of value when the clock's running down for Minnesota. 
she defends at a high level as well. She's got five points, had a tough, tough day from the field, one of 10. But as we mentioned, she does a lot on the defensive end as well. And UConn makes, makes the shots very difficult. You're not getting the shot selection you want usually either. Powell being guarded by AZ Fudd. Caroline Strand. Foul on the floor. That's Ducharme. Excuse me, but yeah, that is Ducharme. Played four minutes in the opener against Arkansas. Getting a few minutes in today as well. And a nice baseline Caroline basket Strand. there for Caroline Strand. From Racine, Wisconsin, a sophomore. Getting the ball back inside to Kristen Williams. Counted. Another points in the paint. Now that, that was just a great call on the coaching staff's part to know that, that Powell was guarding Williams. And she they will post her up if they get the right matchup. It's a great call and great execution. 31 points now for Williams. Caroline Strand's three-pointer misses. Williams with a nice pass to Ducharme, who gets the layup. The question is, is Dino going to show the second half or just the first half where there's a lot they need to work on? Because they play pretty good this half, second half. Sure have, but I'm sure as he's looking, he's looking to his bench right now. And we may see a bunch of players get in the game at the end of this one. 82-51 is the lead. Minnesota, Lindsay Whalen is emptying her bench as well. As Grace coming, let's come into the game. Time out here on the floor as Minnesota trails by 31 points here with 441 left in the game. We'll be right back. We're back here at Imperial Arena. Thanks for joining us for this one. The second ranked UConn Huskies all over Minnesota 82-51. The Big East versus the Big Ten and it has all been UConn today. Paige Beckers takes a seat on the bench, well-deserved. She has been very instrumental in today's game, not the typically uh, offensive out outpouring that she's had normally with 34 career high in her first game, but she has done so much on the floor today. She has just been instrumental in this offense with eight points, and she's got six rebounds and eight assists. That's a great line. Yeah, and just again, you could just see her surveying the floor and her teammates like, who do I need to get involved right now? Who do I need to, who do I need to give confidence because we're going to need them later on in the season? They don't need me to score a whole lot of points today. So just a very heady approach to the game. And that's been Kristen Williams who's taken on the offensive uh, load on her shoulders today as she's got 31 points. Could be somebody different every game for this Huskies team. From Minnesota, number three, Grace Nika Mule on the floor, Avina Westbrook, Aaliyah Edwards, Ducharme, Caroline Ducharme, and Kristen Williams for UConn. Grace coming on the floor inside for the Gophers. Good passing by UConn. Christian Williams drives the baseline. They continue. Good passing, but the shot clock wound down, so tried to get everybody involved on that one. Yeah, Neil's a point guard. She's, she's got to be aware of that shot clock. Shot clock expired. You're right. Got to keep an eye on that there. Gino loves pass, 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 but got to do it before the shot clock expires. And the steal by Nika Mule. She's all alone for the layup. Yeah, she can tell Coach Ariana she made up for, for not knowing the shot clock with the steal. 
Nice steal right here at the timeline and in front of us. Got a good bird's eye view of that. And the layup coming at the top. Godiva Hubbard. Alexia Smith looking for someone. UConn looks so big there in that zone. And the shot falls for Godiva Hubbard. Those are her first points of the game. Shot misses for Avino Westbrook, but UConn with the offensive rebound, and that's got to drive Lindsey Whalen nuts. Can't give UConn too many opportunities. Almost a steal there. Westbrook to Nika Mule. Shot clock down again. Five, four, three. Mule notices it, passes it back out to Westbrook, who misses the three, but they did get the shot off in time. And an offensive rebound again for UConn. She wasn't going to make the same mistake twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, still dangerously close. But you're right. Minnesota wasn't foul. making that mistake. I thought she was going to take the shot as the shot clock was winding too. down. And she decided to pass it off. Sometimes you can be a little too unselfish. Caroline Ducharme's first free throw goes in. It's a big guard who Gino says can finish at the rim and cut to the basket. Good shooter. She's got a lot of parts to her game. But she just needs some game time experience. They're, they're going to need her in March. We're playing for March. That's Gino's motto. As Alexia Smith loses the ball. And there goes Nika Mule for the layup. Nika Mule. Who was, who was guarding Smith on that? I mean, look at Edwards. 6'3", the, the mobility <laughs> defensively. Again, I keep saying it's about the post players for UConn. is incredible. Nika Mule, aggressive defense here against Alexia Smith. She's looking for another steal. Coming at the top, back to Smith on the wing. Oh, and Aaliyah Edwards with those long arms and the steal, and she gets fouled. That's a frustration foul right there by Minnesota Alana Misho. Aaliyah Edwards, Wilson so Gallagher. athletic, so it's versatile. As she will head to the bench and a... A great job today. Eight points. She made all four of her field goals. And just the, the ability, because they're so athletic, to hedge so high and give their guards time to make their adjustment. Mm -hmm. And a steal for the Gophers. Caroline Strand with the steal and the bucket. That's a nice play for Minnesota. Mule, Ducharme, Westbrook, Juhas, getting it inside. To Piaf Gabriel, who's just in the game. Everybody touched the ball on that offensive, offensive possession right there. That's what Gino wants. That's what he got. They didn't get the basket, and the ball goes to Minnesota. One minute and a half left in this one with UConn leading 88-56. They scored 95 points in their opening win, and they're closing in on that here. Ducharme bringing the ball up the floor and out off the tip of the hands of Avina Westbrook. Alexia Smith brings the ball up the floor. Lindsay Whalen still encouraging her troops. And Maggie Sinano is just in the game on the wing. Lindsay Whalen has emptied her bench, wants to make sure everybody gets involved. Yes. And the shot from the point doesn't fall for Aaron Hedman, also in the game. Some frustrated looks there on the bench, but kind of happens to uh, most all of the Huskies' opponents that they play. But great experience playing the top second-ranked team in the country and seeing where you are. Oh, that was big for Lindsay Whaling. It's just, you know, hey, we, we want to learn a lot about ourselves, and we want to use what we learn in this tournament to get better and, you know, get ready for the, for the Big Ten season. 
offensive foul on P.F. Gabriel. Twenty-three seconds left in this one. Alexia Smith. And the jumper by Carolyn Strand is good. Cuts the lead to 30. 13 seconds left on the clock, and you'd expect that they're just going to dribble this one out. And the Yukon Huskies have now won 60 consecutive regular season tournament games as they beat the Minnesota Gophers 88 to 58. Yukon, the second ranked team in the country, improves to 2 and 0 and Minnesota falls to 3 and 2. Yukon will now await the winner of South Florida Syracuse and Minnesota will play the loser of that game which is next here on Flow Sports. Your thoughts on how the Huskies were able to be so dominant today? Uh, they, they picked it up on the defense, the defensive end, and, um, you know, just the little details, the things that they didn't do in that first half, uh, you know, guarding uh, guarding the passes on the wing and doing a really good job on the small screens, I think, helped, and that obviously got them going with offense as well. Kristen Williams having such a good game, a team high 31 points for Kristen Williams. All right, and we have the winning coach, Gina Oriama, standing by with Danny Wexelman. Danny? Yeah, thank you guys so much. Coach, we talked before the half that you wanted to not only limit the threes, but increase the offense from the players on your bench. You scored 50 in the first half. Are you happy with the outcome now? Um, yeah, I thought offensively we were much better the first, uh, you know, that whole third quarter. I don't know that the fourth quarter we were that great, but... Um, once our defense got really good and we stopped giving up uh, the threes that we were giving up and some of the dribble penetration, that, that our defense fueled our offense coming back the other way. So um, that's how we've got to play. But I guess sometimes I have to be reminded that this was only our second game. So, you know, a lot of these other teams are playing. Uh, as the tournament goes on, at least we better anyway. Speak to Kristen Williams in the game that she had 31 points. She looked like she played an entire full court game. What did you like from her today? Yeah, I liked how aggressive she was. Um, you know, I liked how right from the beginning of the game, she went, she was assertive with the ball. She was cutting without the ball. Um, you know, we give her a tough assignment a lot of times defensively, and that gets her going. Um, you know, Kristen's a scorer. That's bottom line. I mean, uh, and if she's making her threes, then she's just really, really hard to play against. Then, uh, you know, that's the kind of game I hope we can get from Kristen every night this year. Coach, thank you. Congratulations. No, thank you. Appreciate it. Jill, back to you. Danny, thank you very much. Gino Oriema in his 37th season. The Huskies, as good as they always are, they are as advertised in this 30-point win over Minnesota.